Hey, it's Chris. Today we're gonna to be hitting all the new features I'm super excited about, I know you are too, coming to macOS Sonoma, Sonoma, Sonoma. It's gonna be weird to get used to that, it always is. How excited am I for some of these features? Let's just say it's on the level of if I could have an infinite nitro coffee IV straight injected into my arm and could never overdose from the caffeine. Can we just start with this new feature that lets you use your websites like apps? It will stick your favorite websites in an app wrapper so it doesn't seem like it's in a browser. It feels like its own standalone app that lives in your dock. Aside from a simplified interface, which is just easier to use, less distractions, cleaner, more minimal. I love that you can get notifications just like you would from a native app. And part of the reason that I like this is because a lot of people out there don't know how to create an app, but they do know how to make a website. The main benefit to this though is that it's gonna make your frequently accessed websites faster and easier to get to, number one. Number two, they can appear in your app switcher. So being able to use your keyboard shortcuts to get into and out of these apps quickly, I love it. And then there's the screensaver situation. Apple has needed some updates to their screensavers for Macs for a long time now, and I love what they've done here. Really, just the simple act of logging in just got so much more satisfying. These are the Apple improvements I appreciate. I don't know anybody that doesn't like the slow-mo screensavers that show up on your Apple TV. Those are gorgeous, beautiful. I wish there was more of them, and I wish you could choose specifically what was playing, have a little more fine-tuning and control over that, but I love that they brought that same concept to the Mac, except they put it into nitro mode, turbo mode, because not only do you get these really great slow-mo videos, but the second you log in, it melts into your actual background. So screensaver turns into background seamlessly. What is Apple doing? Like who's doing this inside of Apple? I wouldn't even have thought about that, much less to have it implemented. This seems like a small thing, but the reason I'm so excited is when I'm in my office, I'm not always at my desk. So number one, if I'm sitting in the chair over in the corner working on the iPad, let's say, it's nice to glance over at the desk setup and see a really nice screensaver. Widgets in the last few updates for Apple products have gotten so cool, like so good. They're appearing everywhere on our lock screens. They're also in the new standby mode for iOS 17, which I'm gonna make a whole video about because that's really cool. The weak spot for widgets on the Mac is that they were always hidden and out of the way. In order to access them, you had to access that side panel and notification center to activate them. And it was like out of sight, out of mind. You would never even know that they were there. And I don't know who out there was like regularly using them all the time. That was like a superpower then to remember that they were there. But now that you can drag them out and place them anywhere on your desktop, and not only that, but they also got that interactive treatment. So they're not just dumb information displays. You can trigger stuff now on your widgets. You can mark things as done, get your reminders taken care of. You can turn on and off the lights in your office or your house. This is really good stuff. And if that's not enough, Apple brought a feature that I saw in an app called Hazeover, which dims out the background behind apps to the Sonoma widget experience. So if you open up Safari, let's say, or Mail, and you've got a bunch of widgets all over your desktop, that could be distracting, things would really blend in, but it automatically hazes over <laughs> the background there and it just kind of fades it out so that you can concentrate, but they're still there. If you want to glance at them, you know they're there, so you can still interact. Then when you add to that, the fact that you can access your iPhone widgets on your Mac, thanks to continuity, because maybe there's a widget that you'd like to use, but that developer hasn't created a Mac app, just an iPhone app, I hate that. I hate it when there's a really great app and it's iPhone only, and I want it on the other thing. But anyways, you can actually grab with continuity, those apps teleport them from your iPhone over to your Mac. What a really cool feature. This is the stuff that makes you smile as an Apple user. So not to rattle on too long about this, but I think there's productivity implications, number one. And number two, it's so good when you can personalize your Apple devices and your experience. And that's definitely what these new widgets are gonna let you do. Now let's talk about Safari for a second. Safari is getting profiles, which are gonna let you separate your browsing activity, say from when you're doing work browsing and personal browsing. Separate those cookies, bookmarks, all of that stuff. I don't know about you, but I've been using the Arc browser for quite a while now, and I'm pretty addicted to it because one of the main features that it has is the ability to separate out different spaces. That's the way that it treats it where you're working. So I've even got one set up for when I'm creating Apple videos like this one, or when I'm doing some design work. This isn't a mustard scenario here, right? Apple is definitely playing catch up. One of the things that I'm so excited about with Sonoma is the improved dictation. When the improved dictation came to iOS and especially to iPad, I use this all the time on the iPad, where you can just enable dictation and talk for as long as you need to, 
but then also type a little bit, but the dictation never turned off like it used to. If you wanted to talk again and mix that up while you're typing or alternate, you could do that. I love that feature, so small, but such a big upgrade in terms of what I could actually accomplish and do. It was just more natural, really like that. So for that to be coming to the Mac, I've been waiting for that. I'm gonna use this all the time. There's so many ways that Sonoma is going to give me some nice little boosts to my productivity. But you know what? There's another way you can be more productive in the Apple ecosystem. That's with my course, Learning to Be Productive, which will help you get more done with less burnout. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's linked up down below. People are liking the course. Lots of great reviews. Sonoma updates the operating system for your Mac. Learning to Be Productive updates the operating system for your mind. All right, let's talk about messages here because that's a big update also for macOS, especially these search filters. I don't know about you, but during the day, I almost message people more from my Mac than I do from my iPhone or from anywhere else. So if you have even one group message happening, much less multiple threads of group messages, you know how badly a nice search and filter feature has been needed. I got this philosophy group that I'm part of and there's some giant discussions on there, as you can imagine. So to be able to go and catch up, just with a tap and see what's been going on. That's gonna be great. And then to just swipe to reply, make things faster, I like it. Now I talked a lot about the PDF upgrades and the way Apple is handling PDFs and Apple Notes in my iPad OS reaction, because I feel like when I do PDF stuff, I usually do it over there on the iPad because the Apple Pencil, right? That's what I'm using to sign stuff and to mark stuff up. But to be able to do the same things like fill out your documents faster with this auto fill, that's gonna be great over on the Mac as well. And it's really great on the Mac too to have better integration with PDFs in Apple Notes because I don't know, if you're like me, I just come back to Apple Notes. I try all the other ones, they seem really cool, but then for whatever reason, Apple Notes is just the one that makes the most sense for me. But one thing that was really lacking was really robust PDF support. So that's here now, and that's really cool. People are gonna really love the ability to start something in notes and then finish that up in pages if they need to polish it or share it with somebody, you know, and don't just want straight up text. But I think one of the coolest features that Apple has ever pushed out, and you're gonna be like, Chris, are you crazy for calling it this? But I've been asking for this for the longest time, is the ability to finally be able to link notes together in Apple Notes. Now already I've covered smart folders and tags and all of those new features that have come to Apple Notes recently, both in the course and just on the channel. But this is a feature that Rome Research, Notion, Obsidian users have been able to take advantage of for a really long time. And it looks like Apple's done pretty much the bare minimum. They just let you link notes together, literally. There's no knowledge graph that shows you all the different links as a big web, you know. But that's okay, because this is what I really, really wanted. There used to be a way to do this with the shortcut. It was really jankety, didn't work too well, not smooth at all. But now you can do it. But not only that, there's a keyboard shortcut. One of the low-key things that I've heard a lot of people talking about because it's just that nice is the new inline text predictions, basically better autocorrect. Autocorrect has been a pain, almost more of a pain than useful <laughs> over the years. <laughs> but this is actually a good version of trying to predict what it is that you're gonna type. And honestly, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, I think, but this feels like one of those things that keeps you in the Apple ecosystem, happy with the Apple ecosystem. It's not a huge thing but you get enough of these little things like this that surprise and delight you when you notice them for the first time, and they add up to a really nice big experience. Now, a lot of people are excited to see Apple trying to make more inroads into gaming, serious gaming on the Mac. In years past, I probably would have been more excited about that. I'm trying to get away from playing games more all the time. Number one, I don't have that much time. I don't know about you, right? I got the Xbox just kind of collecting dust over there. So there's the time factor. But just from like a productivity standpoint, from a what do you wanna be spending your time on standpoint, I've really been getting more into like reading and stuff. And I've been finding books enjoyable in a way that I haven't in the past. So this is my long way of saying, I'm not gonna be talking much about the gaming here because it's just less relevant to me at the moment. Still, I know that a lot of you are gonna be really excited about the new game mode. I know you're gonna be excited about some of the games that are making their way to the Mac platform for the first time. I actually did see a demo of this cat game here getting played on the new 15 inch MacBook Air. It was good looking, smooth, looked probably kind of like a fun world to explore. One smaller feature that I'm actually really into is the improved permissions sharing. You know, it's really annoying when you go to use an app and it's like, give me all the access to all of your photos and your camera roll. And you're like, no, I really wanna use this app, but why do you need that? They don't need it. It's really annoying. So improve control there, but also the same thing applies to your calendar. You know, if you wanna add an event to your calendar, 
but the app is trying to view all your information, know everything about you, well, you don't want that either. So to be able to say, yeah, you can add just that one thing to my calendar without seeing anything else, that's really cool. That's the Apple way. You know, the new screen sharing features, those are pretty cool. It's nice to float over the screen. It's nice to put yourself front and center, you know, over the content and all that. It's hard for me to get excited about those. I mean, there's probably somebody out there who just loves to present, you know, on their Zoom meetings and stuff. It's not really something I look forward to having to do, <laughs> but if you do, maybe you'll be really into this. Along the lines of the last thing we were just talking about with better shared permissions, the new screen sharing picker, that actually is pretty cool because you don't wanna accidentally share something that you didn't mean to, right, on the meeting. So to be able to just fine tune what it is that's being shown, I think that's actually a real good quality of life improvement in this era when everyone's doing all their business digitally. I don't know, that's the stuff I'm most excited about right now. There's other things, littler things, and I'll explore those when I do like a review and really dig into it and demo it, show it. You know, that's gonna be for the public beta, by the way. I'm not gonna break the NDA by showing it off. Like I know everyone else is, I get the comments like, Chris, break the NDA. No, I'm not gonna. You can anticipate, you can hit subscribe, so you can check that out when it comes out. I'm gonna be exploring watchOS, iOS, plus lots of other great videos. So subscribe, number one. Number two, get yourself signed up for the newsletter. It's the number one newsletter recommended by Apple employees themselves. Is that true? I don't know, but I feel like if they were reading it, they would probably think yes, maybe. <laughs> it has a really high open rate though. People really do like it. Comes out on Fridays, so check it out. Also, this is your final reminder for the video. Learning to be productive's price is going to go up. It's got some updates coming. We're gonna be talking about being productive inside of Vision OS. We're gonna talk about kicking your tech addictions. We're gonna talk about all kinds of stuff. And those are gonna be free updates to anybody who purchases now. If you purchase it now, at the prices at now, you're gonna have it all locked in and you're not gonna to have to pay for updates. So check it out. Everything's linked up down below. Thanks for hanging out. Catch you in the next video. Later.